so the title of this series here, or the title of this sermon is, Are You Prepared For? Dot, dot, dot. Are you prepared for? This picture that you see here, what's your first impressions of that picture? Anyone? Stinking. Pain. Despair. All of those things are true. All of those things are true. This is a person here that's in pain, that's lost, that doesn't know what their calling is, but they're searching. Are they prepared for it? Open your Bibles with me and go to Psalms 85 and 4. Actually, Psalms 85 and 2. Now, the significance of this, given this time of the year, will become apparent. But let me just pick it up. You pick it up in verse 2. It says, you forgave the, inequ the inequity of your people and covered all of their sins. You set aside all of your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. And here it comes. Restore us again, God our Savior, and put away your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again? Huh. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Whew. Those are some tough words. Right? That's, the, that, that's the song that the psalmist penned, talking about the nation that God chose to be his people. It doesn't sound like God is too thrilled with him, does it? Restore us again, God our Savior, and put away your displeasure towards us. In this season, everybody's aware that this leads up to the birth of Christ. But are you prepared for the manifestations that come when God blesses you? Because that's what the birth of Christ is. That's a blessing. I don't think you guys heard me. I said, that's a blessing. You may not feel like it is, but there's a circumstance in your life that, that's ringing to you right now, knowing that God got me out of that. Amen? Amen? Again, looking at this person here, you see despair. You know what I see? Do you, can, you, can you hit the... Uh, the enter button before this to show the, the two pictures prior to this? Nope. Nope. Okay, we have some technical difficulties here, but that's okay. We're going to get through it. So there was another picture here of this gentleman. He's sitting on a ledge. He has a saw. Now, this guy is preparing to cut this tree down. The problem is, though, that he's sitting on the wrong side of the branch, right? He's sitting on the part of the branch that when you cut it, he's going to fall. The significance of that is lack of preparation. So he thought he was doing the right thing. He thought, I have my saw. Here's the tree. I'm going to cut it, and everything's going to be good. But his lack of preparation and attention to detail was something else you find yourself ending up in a situation like this. Amen? The significance of the birth of Christ is not something that I think that we really, we really mull over. Great, the, the, the holiday season is filled with purchases and gifts and, and things of all that nature. But what's the takeaway from it? What's the takeaway from this season? That God gave his son for us. I don't think you guys heard me. That God gave his son. Let me ask you this. Do you love your child? I'm talking to you. Do you love your child? If I asked you to give me your child, 
to save everybody else, would you do it? <laughs> That's the right answer if we have DYS people in here. <laughs> but the reason I want to use such a dramatic example is so you can understand the dramatic consequences that, that God gave to the people that chose not to follow him. He said, I'm going to send you my son. I'm going to send you part of me. Even though I've seen the things that you guys have done. I've seen your lack of preparation for me. I've seen that when, when the time comes for me to show up again, you may not even recognize me. You know why? Many of us will be like this. Right? The manifestations of God might show up on social media, but he's not going to show up there. Am I right? I had a conversation with, with my wife this morning. We were talking about the state of the church. So we have differing, differing opinions on this. My opinion was this. I asked, so where is the church today? Think about Psalms 85 that we just read, right? And then ask yourself, where is the church today? You could take those words from back then and apply them to the church today. Right? The only thing different is instead of it being on a scroll, it's on my iPad. Amen? So I ask you, church, are you prepared for him? Are you prepared for him? I like giving practical examples. Let's give one. There's 21 days until Christmas. Amen? On that 21st day, family gets together, you have gifts, times of sharing. If I told you in 21 days, the job that you're at is going to completely change. You're going to have a new manager, new management, and you're not sure what's going to happen. How would you react? You're on the clock. How would you react? I got a lot of professionals in here. So imagine if I came to you and I said, you know what? We're assigning you a new regional director. Right? We didn't like the way the prophets looked last quarter. How would you react? <laughs> but see, it's not all doom and gloom, right? There's a reason why this person's coming. Change needs to happen. The status quo is no longer good enough. You guys hear me? The status quo, if you think that the, the life you're living right now is the best life you can have, you're selling yourself short. You're selling yourself short. Jump with me to Luke. We're going to go to Luke 2. We're going to start off in verse 4. So God's chosen people knew that they, they were out of favor with God. We saw that in Psalms. They knew change needed to happen. They knew that they were on the clock. They knew somebody needed to come in and take care of the situation. The last quarter's prophets looked bad. The last quarter century looked terrible. Right? Change needs to happen. God being the CEO said, all right, I'm going to change it. We're going to make change happen. Who am I going to send? We pick it up in verse 4. Luke chapter 2. Church, say amen when you have it, or you can follow with us up on the big screen. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her first son. She wrapped him in cloths, placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Million dollar question, who's the baby? I'm a baby, but that's not the baby I'm talking about. Who's the baby that we're talking about? Jesus. Jesus. You look at the birth, the birth is something natural. That's humanity in play. But look what God did. If God wanted to change it immediately, he could, but he said, no, my people have to learn. 
So I'm going to go live amongst them. I'm going to send my son. He's going to live amongst them. I got to get to their heart by some way or somehow. The CEO said, hey, I'm going to send somebody into your area because I don't like the way things are looking. Are you prepared for that? Well, if you were doing what you were supposed to be, you would welcome it, right? Because clearly, I can take what I'm doing and improve upon it to get to where I need to be. What happens if you weren't prepared? What happens if you weren't prepared and then this person showed up invoking change? How is that usually received? Are you one of the people that would be resistant to that? We pick it up in verse 9. Verse 9 says, An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I will bring you the good news that will cause great joy for all the people. We're going to stop right there. This angel appeared to the shepherds. The Lord said, Look, tell them Savior's on his way. Matter of fact, the Savior was just born. Your prayers have been answered. Now, remember where God's people were before the birth of Christ. Captive. Captive. Israel cracks me up because no matter how many opportunity God gives them, they still find a way to, I'm not going to say mess it up, but do, the, do, do something else. They find a way to do something else. But out of God's love, he said, no, no. I understand that, but here, take this. I'm going to help you guys get there. That's the birth of Christ. That's the beauty of the birth of Christ. That's an opportunity for us. But will you be prepared to receive it? When it arrives, would you know? I was talking to a couple of brothers last night at the meet and greet, and we had this discussion about where society is now. And one of the questions that came up was, if someone walked up to you and said, Pastor Manny, I'm the son of God. I'm the Messiah. I'm the chosen one. I'm the one. I'm him. What would you say? <laughs> Dap him up and throw him out, right? Um, <laughs> but you would have a perspective as to know, is this man that's coming before me saying that he's the son of God, the true son of God? Now, you've, you've, you've prepared, you've been in your studies, you, you've prayed. So there's different fruits that you can see from people, right, if you know how to look for them. But that comes with the preparation. Do you remember the first picture that we had up there? The guy with his, his hands down, or hands in his head on his hands, that look of despair. When I see that, I see I'm about to take this test and I'm not prepared. I'm about to be asked to do something that's going to take me out of my comfort zone, and I'm not prepared. God brings things into your life and takes things out of your life based on your preparation or lack thereof. The birth of Christ was not by accident. He was giving us time to prepare. When the birth of Christ happened, some knew exactly what it was. Scripture says it in Luke, right? They knew exactly what it was. The angel came down and said it. They knew exactly what it was. Conversely, others today... They still doubt it. Probably people in here that still doubt it. But amen, that's why you're here. We're going to get you through that. Amen? Take a look at verse 14. Next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Yep. Accepting and operating in the anointing of the arrival. Ooh. That sounds like a good sentence, what is it, but what does that mean? So when God decides to bless you, or like he blessed, like blessed us with his son, did we recognize it, and then could we act on it? Did we recognize it, and could we act on it? Well, how do, how do we act on it? By following his laws. Right? He, gave us, he gave us a manual. Mine's just an iPad, but you have the Bible, but he gave us a manual. He told us what was going to happen. The funny thing about the Bible is the story never changes, just the participants do. 
right? You could take a page out of the Bible. You could take a, page, a section out of Luke and put that in today. The question is, the participants, what are you willing to do with that? God sent his son. Do you acknowledge that? And then what? Now what? As I was preparing this, I asked myself, so back then, there was all this doubt about, um, is this really the son of God? Even though scripture states it, there were many who still doubted it. They weren't ready to receive the greatness of God. Okay. Fast forward 2016, how many of us are ready for God to come back? We talk about it. We talk, we talk about it every Sunday, right? The coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lord. What happens when he shows up? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you prepared for what he's about to do in your life? We as Christians, we, 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 love, to, we love to say that, oh, I'm going I'm to pray about this. I'm going to fast. But then what? Right? It's all in the preparation. But then what? What do you do after that? Talk about it. Right? Saints of God, we're in a time right now where you have no more time to talk about it. The time is over. The time for talking is over. And, 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 as a, and as a people of God, as a church of God, I'm putting myself and you guys on notice. It's time to act, not time to talk. We do a lot of talking. It's time to act. All right, so what does that mean, Mr. Drew? I need to act. What does that mean? What does that look like? Well, that looks like when you see your brother or sister in church, you don't cut their eye, you don't cut your eyes at them. You show them love. When somebody brings somebody new to church in, you don't judge them based on what they look like. You're just happy that they're here. They showed up. Right? When you hear all the, 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 the backbiting in church, and I'm only going to stick on church right now because the change starts here. So, so stay with me. The backbiting in church, who can change that? We can. Right? God sent his son to give us another opportunity. Remember what this season's about. Remember what the season of Advent is about. It's about a renewing. A renewing for who? God's already whole. So who's being renewed? Us. And who's resisting it? Us. Let me know if I'm wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. But every church I've been to, I see a couple of the same traits. I see the regulars. I see the people who are all happy that they're in church the first time. Then I see other people. Call them transitioners. They're not sure, do I want to be full in? Do I want to be full out? Do I want to be held accountable? Do I not? Do I want to just say I go to church? God didn't send Jesus here just to say that you went to church. I'm going to pause on that one. God did not send his son here for what? So you can play church? Hmm. The book of Luke is an inter interesting book when you talk about the context of the birth of Jesus. To me, it's still profound to me that at that time, and I, and I was still, I was trying to, I was really trying to, I was really trying to put myself in that moment that someone would say, say to me that this is the Messiah, that this child being born now, that's the future, that's the king. He's going to take you from where you are and bring you to where God has promised you to be. But it's coming. It's coming again. It's coming. Are you prepared? The spirit that I felt in the room earlier was overwhelming. Praise you, um, Master Pastor Community, for allowing that, that spirit to manifest itself. That spirit was overwhelming. But you know what my fear is? My fear is that once the sermon's done and you feel good, you're going to leave here. You're still going to cut your eyes at the sister you didn't like. And they're going to go all about your business. You're going to go about your business. You know why that, you know that's the fear of mine? Because that tells me you're not prepared. And the clock is ticking. You are not prepared. What happens when that district manager shows up to the team and has his first meeting? And he asks about the sales reports. 
Where's my financial people at? I know you guys are here. I'm not going to point you out, but I know you're here. So <laughs> that first meeting, and you can't give reasonable answers to questions on, on, on numbers and strategies and lack of profits, how does the second meeting usually go? Usually half the people in the room are for that second meeting. What happens when Jesus comes back and has a meeting right here? Will half the room be gone? I pray not. I pray that you're prepared. I pray that you're diligent. I pray that you stay on your knees. I pray that you invoke the spirit that we saw here earlier. Otherwise, that's between you and that's between you and the Savior. I'm just a messenger. I'm just here to say what he's going to do. The question is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Right now, everyone in here is suffering from something. You're suffering from something. Divorce, depression, something physical, family. You don't have to tell me what it is, but everybody in his, you know, you, you, there's some kind of affliction happening. God coming back. That's an answer, but you got to be ready for it. That's an answer, but you got to be ready for it, right? L listen here. I wouldn't go out and give you a million dollars if you couldn't manage 10. I wouldn't go out and give my daughter a car if she has no license. I was talking to that one. <laughs> yeah, cute kid. Um, The gift that God is giving us is nothing to be taken lightly. It's nothing to be taken lightly. A lot of us do, though. Right? A lot of us act like we have infinite time. Infinite time. We're on the clock. Saints of Christ, we are on the clock. What are you prepared to do? What are you prepared to do? Let's take a look at verse 20. Actually, we'll jump up actually to verse 17. Read 17 through 20. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Go down to verse 20. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that he that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So not only did they, did they get the message that the Messiah was being born, or that the Messiah was born, they took heed of that. They said, I have to go see this. God is telling me to go see this. I have to be a part of this. Right? They got up, they rose, they went to action, they left. God speaks to you. Do you listen? There's those friends that God told you, you know what? You probably don't want to be around them. You might want to go down this path. No, no, I got this, God. Thank you. Thanks for the suggestion, though. Okay. There's this relationship that you're in. And God said, well, I don't think this is the right relationship to help you build your spiritual growth. What do we do? No, no. Thank you for the suggestion. I got this. You're going to leave here today and probably go do something that God, that, that you know that God does not want you to do. What are you going to do? Now you're accountable for it. I, I just delivered the message. You're accountable for it. You know why Jesus came. You're accountable. So now what? So now what do you do? These are a lot of open-ended questions because I want you to really take some time and think about those things. We can't just be people that, that come in, sit here, take a spot, maybe put my hands up, and then leave the same way. That's not what it's about. That's not why he came. You have to leave a different person. Church, do you hear me? You have to leave a different person. Listen, I don't need you to sit here and put your hands up right now and say, yes, minister, I understand the message. I need you to ask yourself the question, am I willing to change? And only you can answer that question. Amen? 
Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we come before you right now giving you thanks for the opportunity to serve you. We come before you right now giving you thanks for your son who you did not have to send. We come before you giving you thanks for another opportunity to show that you made the right call with us. That we are all about your business and that we want to be transformed. That we want to change. That we want to be advocates of change. And we want to be held accountable for our change. Father God, we just ask that in this moment, every person in here gets to see the glory of your grace. Every person in here gets to experience the glory of your grace. And we pray this now in your son's name, Jesus, amen. Amen? amen. amen. Say to God, before, before I step down, I implore you, I implore you, do not end up like that gentleman that we saw earlier. Do not end up like that person that we saw earlier. Know that with God comes, on, comes a, different level of, a different level of living for you. Know that with God, know that with Jesus in your life, your answers are different. Your answers are completely different. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.